before the hype of microservices and the cloud, in the enterprise world, there was this thing called the enterprise service bus, also known as service oriented architecture. And the idea here is that you have your message bus, which is enterprise service bus, and you can plug in different applications. So in the, in the cloud, modern day cloud world, this is like, I don't know, AWS, SNS. If you're, if you're perhaps doing it yourself, it would be maybe Apache Kafka, like a message bus where you put messages on and then different services can listen on. This is actually a better way of communicating than say using REST, unfortunately, uh, because it's a lot faster to have subscribers and, and, and pass messages or events around. Now, where the enterprise service bus differs from say modern day Kafka and AWS SNS, the enterprise service bus actually left the door open to program business logic into the bus. So certain messages would maybe get transformed. Maybe you can think of it as like ETL, extract, transform, uh, load. It's got the same sort of issues that there's a program now. It's got a certain like richness, which, <laughs> which allows people to load up complexity on that enterprise service bus. So, hi, my name is Kai Hendry. I'm a infrastructure consultant based in Singapore. And my clients nowadays are enterprises. And enterprises typically have some relics of the 90s, i.e. enterprise service buses. They, they usually came in with this whole IBM. I think it came from IBM, you know, this whole, you know, web logic stuff, you know, the web sphere. There are open source equivalents, I think, like JBoss and things like this. But anyway, these things are nightmares. These things are absolute nightmares. I've seen projects uh, fail, you know, because there's so much complexity in the enterprise service bus that you can't easily um, map it back into the application, which you kind of have to do. The modern day way of doing things is that you have a dumb pipe. The enterprise service bus was like a smart pipe. The dumb pipe means you can't have this transformation. You have to put them in the application. You have to put them in code. With the old way of doing things, this complexity was coded in like, perhaps even like crazy reams of XML, which is just so, you, you, basically it's so difficult to get to, to, to do a digital transformation enterprise company from, from that sort of architecture because you basically, only a few people on the planet know how to, to basically migrate that, that XML into um, you know, a modern application and you just end up, it's basically a greenfield project, really. I mean, there's, there's no real sane other way to do it. It's a rewrite, it's a rewrite. I don't know of any like, you know, very complex, uh, successful digital transformations in that sense. You know, when, when there's lots of complexity in the smart enterprise service, service bus. So there's something to watch out for. So you might be thinking, why are enterprises stuck with this weird SOA architecture? Well, I, that's an interesting question. And like, I'm not too sure why companies stuck with like J2EE and you know, these war EAR archives for deploying applications. I think basically in the early 2000s, Web 2.0 came along, showed that you can get by using, I don't know, open web technologies. And that won most of the mindshare. Unfortunately, uh, enterprises have already made huge investments in their IBM sanctioned, you know, SOA architecture. And they've always kind of struggled. And as, as time goes on, I mean, this enterprise service bus, I think, went out of fashion a good 15 years ago. As time goes on, it gets more and more pertinent for them to do a migration, right? So here's, here's me in 2021 trying to help them out. Say I actually won the project <laughs> and managed to get them to migrate to a modern infrastructure. What is a modern infrastructure? It's probably, it's probably the cloud, it's probably AWS. And do their problems actually go away? I mean, in 20 years time, 
Are they just going to be as locked in and in a difficult situation as they are now? And the answer depressingly is probably. The thing is, you know, the minute you start using AWS, I don't know, Kinesis ETL streams and and workflow uh, work steps or something like that, I think it's just basically invites complexity. I think the thing to watch out for is like these sort of like no code, you know, interfaces. The minute that your company has decided, oh, we're going to use this this fantastic user interface and not like an open language to get to codify our business logic. The minute I think you're just going to be stuck. You, you you'll struggle to um, move to another platform. You'll struggle to maybe win mind share on that in that way to do it with like people who are you know traditional computer science engineers. They won't know your domain specific language and they won't care to know it. And you'll have difficulty hiring for these uh, for this sort of people as as soon as your your old colleagues your old uh, employees retire. So. I can't help but think, depressingly, in 20 years' time, the situation where enterprises are now with their SOA architecture is just going to be, you know, lock in 2.0 in, in, on the cloud if they use certain products. If you kept to the web, I think the overarching story I want to share with you guys is here is that, you know, back in the 2000s, the RESTful API, the web, it won. There was a way to for small businesses. There's a way for uh, small businesses to get big to get big using open technologies. And if you don't fall for the hype, if you go for open technologies like the web, I think your business has a way forward, digitally speaking. But if you basically buy an off-the-shelf product, buy into the you know the hype. Get that Oracle, whatever, modern day system. It's not modern. You're going to be stuck. So buy Beware. And uh, for those in the know, stick to open web technologies. You won't, you won't go far wrong. Thanks for watching. Please give the video a like. See you in the next one. I don't sure I like that sign off.